Welcome to the Heavy Hitters Podcast. Muay Thai has become your passion. You want to stop wasting opportunities. You want to leave your mark. You're a heavy hitter. Together, we are the movers and the shakers of the Muay Thai community. Those challenging themselves on a daily basis to become more. Challenging Muay Thai to become more. Heavy hitters are the Thai boxers and the coaches of all levels looking for the most efficient and effective Muay Thai performance training strategies to level up. I'm Don Heatrick, and it's my mission to share with you just that. It may be a bit of a cliche in the fight game that you either win a fight or you learn, but that doesn't mean it's not true. However, you can seriously increase your rate of learning, even if you won the fight, if you follow up by reflecting on the answers to certain questions. And this episode, I'll share with you the 15 winning questions to ask yourself after every fight, win or lose, so that you never lose. After a fight, we enter a cycle of rinse and repeat before the next one. But the best fighters, of course, don't repeat the same training and preparation between one fight and the next. It's an evolving process that should nurture the fighter to grow beyond where they were. So it's not a case of just repeating everything, it's a case of improving and repeating the test, which is the fight. And as part of the training process, the fight is much more than just the competition that you win or lose. It's the opportunity to test how effective your training has been and to reassess the gap between your current ability and the needs of the sport at the level you compete. My engineering background means that I'm always looking to interpret the results of the test to form a conclusion and make some recommendations. Fighting and not taking the time to evaluate the results you've been shown is wasting the test. As a coach or a fighter, every fight itself is the ultimate evaluation test. True, this test involves a massive degree of variability in your opponent, but that's our test conditions, our reality and we can glean a ton of valuable insight to inform your next cycle of training before that next fight. But the trick is to ask yourself the right questions and to answer them honestly. Lying to yourself to cover up any perceived shortcomings will stunt your progress. Acknowledging the things you can improve on means you'll improve. It's a growth mindset that will rapidly accelerate your rate of improvement because you'll stop repeating mistakes. After a fight, Don't waste the opportunity you've just had to shine a light onto your personal development as a fighter. Honesty is one of my heavy hitters core values and armed with that, you're in a position to always move forwards, to never lose. So reflecting on your last fight, let's take a look at the questions I ask fighters to consider so we can plan their next phase of training to best effect. One, how did I compare to my opponent? Fight record, effectiveness at different fight ranges, styles, Strength, power, speed, cardio fitness, balance and stability, mobility and flexibility, height and reach advantage, fight IQ, mental toughness or heart. Keeping a tally of who had the upper hand where is incredibly useful in review. Two, how did my training or fight camp go leading up to the fight? Your strength and conditioning, the Muay Thai training planned peaking, what went well? What challenges did you have? What changes would you make before the next fight? Three, How did the weight cut and weigh-in go? Body fat levels, water loading, glycogen depletion, etc. Again, what went well? What were the challenges? What changes would you make? Four, how did my fight day preparation go? Rehydration, meals, warm-up, mental preparation. What went well? What were the challenges? And what changes you'd make? Five, how did the fight itself go? What went well? Challenges, changes. Six, How did after the fight go? Injuries treated, debrief, general attitude. What went well? Challenges or changes? Next, consider these general questions and answer with your gut feeling. They may provide some further insight, but also serve to transition into goal setting. Seven, what do I need to keep doing? Eight, what do I need to stop doing? Nine, what do I need to start doing? Finally, Look over your post-fight review answers and if required, extract one to two priority goals for each of the following questions to be achieved before your next fight. 10. What are my Muay Thai technical and tactical goals? 11. What are my psychological goals? 
12. What are my physical athletic goals? 13. What are my planning training goals? 14. What are my fight day preparation goals? 15. What are my weight cut and nutrition goals? Don't try and change everything at once. Focus on the top 20% high priority tasks that you must improve before your next fight. And these need to be SMART goals. The acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant and Time Bound. And this means specific, state exactly what you want to accomplish and why, who is involved and where you can perform it. Measurable, clarify how you'll quantify if you've met your goal or not by setting a numerical value. Achievable, check that it's possible to achieve your measurable goal in what you have available to you in the time scale that you've set which is coming up. Relevant. Check that the goals you set will move you towards better performance in your next fight according to the critical areas we've highlighted in the review questions. Time bound. Set a date by which the goal must be achieved and stick to it. Here's an example of practical smart goals in the following scenario. In his last fight, Andy found he struggled against his opponent in the clinch. He felt weaker and technically and tactically less skilled too. As a result, he tied quickly in the clinch and was easily outscored with knees and takedowns. And he acknowledges that his clinch fighting is a weaker part of his Muay Thai skill set. And to lend some extra background from the supplemental training side, Andy has a good aerobic capacity, scoring well on the Cooper run test and a general resting heart rate of 55 beats per minute. He does, however, score poorly on chin-up max strength and muscular endurance tests. Based on this review from his last fight, and some knowledge of his strength and conditioning performance testing, we realized that rather than lacking fitness, Andy tired due to inferior clinch skills and foundation strength. Appropriate SMART goals would look like this. For the Muay Thai technical and tactical goal, finish every Muay Thai training session for the next four weeks with 10 to 15 minutes of clinch practice, swapping in at least two different clinch partners of either greater technical ability or physical strength than Andy. For the physical athletic goals, one, program a strength block of training, focusing strength sessions on achieving a chin up one rep max with body weight plus 20% in four weeks time. Two, perform one set of strict form body weight chin ups three times per week, starting at nine reps in the first week, adding one rep each week to be capable of 12 strict reps in four weeks time. Breaking down your post fight review and defining training goals like this make you a better fighter, regardless if you won your last fight or not. And very soon, losing becomes less likely and you'll need to work harder in your post-fight review to dig out ways to improve despite winning. Truthfully, losing is the knowledge and the fuel to improve. And improving is the real winning. I'll leave you with that as that's all we've got time for in this episode of the Heavy Hitters podcast. If you want to learn more about how Muay Thai strength and conditioning can make you a better fighter, head over to heatrick.com. That's H-E-A-T-R-I-C-K, where you can find all the heavy hitters' resources, articles, videos, and courses, including a transcript of this podcast and bonus links too. You'll find a link to that transcript page along with this podcast. And don't forget to subscribe to the Heatrick Heavy Hitters podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Anchor, or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can audio message me on Anchor too so you could feature in future episodes. Heavy hitters, I challenge you to discover, practice and become. And I'll catch you next time.